I'm Peter Block here at ACC 2019 in New Orleans. On my left is Eri Kato from Kyoto in Japan. And uh, Eri has worked on dapagliflozin. We talked about dapagliflozin a lot at this meeting. It's the hot drug for diabetes, and you're the heart failure type. So, uh, Eri, tell me about your trial specifically. Dapagliflozin seems to be the cure-all for everything in diabetes, but heart failure is your speciality. So, yes. what did you find? So in our study, we evaluated the impact of ejection fraction on clinical benefit of SGLT2 inhibitor dapagliflozin uh, with special uh, interest in heart failure and mortality. And we found uh, two there are two primary findings with our study. One is that dapagliflozin reduces hospitalization for heart failure regardless of ejection fraction, and that includes patient with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Okay, so let me interrupt that mm -hmm. in a minute because that's an important yes. sort of subgroup yes. analysis, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, patients with preserved ejection fraction and heart failure with, you know, arguably non-compliance of their left ventricle really have a different subgroup of, of physiology, don't they? Why does this work so well? Well, it is difficult to tell why it works from the clinical trials. Um, Dapagliflozin reduces uh, blood pressure, it reduces, um, it improves uh, glucose, of course, and it improves um, um, NASH. So they're all, it's really multifactorial, so um, there's no one reason why it improves HFF, but we think it's more than just a, a fluid loss. Okay, so the statin for diabetes, if you will. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. so what else did you find besides the fact that across all groups it seems to reduce hospitalization for heart failure? The other important finding was that dapagliflozin reduces cardiovascular death and all-cause mortality in patients with HEFREF. And now this was really a robust finding. So it reduces um, all-cause mortality by 41%, and it reduces cardiovascular death by 45%. So these are hard endpoints. Yes. And these were achieved on top of um, evidence-based heart failure therapies, including ACE inhibitor and beta blockers. So it is surprising that they really enjoyed this. Okay, so if I'm taking care of a cardiology patient in whom I've done a stent procedure, now I see them because they have heart failure later on, and they're on maximum therapy, dapagliflozin is an addition that will give me further improvement in outcomes. Is that a fair statement? I think that's what we found in our study. Perfect. So. Uh, What's the take-home message here, um, Ari? We've got a drug that everybody now is touting as the right thing to do to use for diabetes. Should we use it earlier? That's a very good question. Um, you know, uh, we usually use uh, dapagliflozin on top of uh, metformin. Uh, we haven't tested whether it works as a primary um, uh, choice. Um, that's for another uh, study that we should be looking forward to. Um, but I think from what we found so far, it's a, there's a robust evidence that it may work as a first therapy. Um, so yes, I think it's uh, beneficial in, in all types of diabetes patients. Who should not have it? That's a good question. We're still looking forward to that. Um, so we're digging into um, details of um, other findings. Um, we have to have totality of uh, evidence, so we, we're not really sure at this moment. We're looking into, so we are looking into um, high-risk group, including uh, peripheral artery disease patients. Um, so that will be presented at ACC yeah. too. Actually, we've already talked about that in one of the other interviews, and mm -hmm. I do know, I know that those peripheral <laughs> disease patients do better as well. Right. So uh, it's going to be tricky to find out, but mm -hmm. uh, dapagliflozin is clearly on the map. If mm -hmm. anyone's out there taking care of diabetic patients, mm -hmm. think about dapagliflozin to add to your armamentarium. Thank you, Ari. Thank you.